Hey, happy Friday. This week we'll talk about all the big smartphone makers like Samsung, LG and Nokia apparently not wanting to make their own phones anymore. We'll talk about Slack being acquired by Salesforce and we'll also talk about Chinese chip makers being in deep, deep trouble. We also have a very special James Bond edition Nokia 8.3 that you can win by completing our weekly tech knowledge quiz, which I'll tell you more at the end of the video and welcome to the Friday checkout. Okay, my pick of the week is going to be a wave of reports showing that large smartphone brands like Samsung, LG, Motorola and Nokia are starting to embrace outsourcing. HMD Global, the company that has revived the Nokia brand, has outsourced much of its hardware manufacturing and some of the design to Foxconn since the beginning. But this week we got news that they're bringing in an Indian phone maker called Lava to take care of some of their low-end models as well. Motorola will likely join forces with Lava for low-end phones as well, according to the same report. And Korean industry sources are claiming that Samsung and LG are looking to increase their outsourcing too. The two Korean companies have both actually started embracing so-called ODMs in 2018, but next year LG is apparently looking to have a staggering 70% of its smartphones outsourced to these companies, including for the first time ever relatively high-end models like the Velvet 2 and the successor of the LG Stylo, so pretty much everything but the high-end flagships and experimental devices like the Wing. And Samsung is rumored to bring their number up to 20% of their gigantic catalog as well. ODMs, if you didn't know, are so-called original design manufacturers. And as the name implies, they're not just dumb manufacturers. They don't just receive specifications and create a product out of them. They actually take care of a lot of the design. They actually sometimes design smartphones from the ground up for their clients like Nokia or Samsung, for example. Of course, brands can then still choose to be in control of picking key components or requiring certain quality standards or picking an aesthetic or providing the software support. So it's not like they automatically go hands off, but it is a significant shift across the industry regardless. ODMs have been extremely common in more simple industries like household electronics or commodity electronics like earphones or even low-end laptops. Most brands can't be bothered to design and build those things themselves, but this is kind of the first time we're starting to see it happen with high-end smartphone makers all over the world, and it'll be interesting to see what the outcomes are. And if you're wondering why all of these companies have intensified their efforts to outsource now, apparently what it has to do with the most is all of the international tensions around trade. The US trade sanctions against China, the increased protectionism from India and China and new tariffs everywhere, they basically make all of these big international corporations look around on their supply chain and think, Hmm, how can we diversify geographically and how can we outsource the parts of our business that are not crucial to us so we can let other companies take the risk for us? Okay, and my win of the week is going to be Slack getting acquired by Salesforce. And I know enterprise software acquisition news are kind of a snooze fest, but I'll keep it short and I think this is an important one, so I think you should know about it. If you haven't heard of Slack before, it's kind of like Discord, but for companies. It's a super popular chat app built for employees to talk on, and it was on track to become the de facto company chat app everywhere. I mean, literally every work-related group chat that I am a part of is on Slack. And growth was incredible, until Microsoft a few years ago launched their Slack clone called Teams. They bundled that for free for any company with an Office subscription, and through the virtue of free stuff, they completely killed Slack's momentum and left it in the dust. That's a huge deal because Slack and Teams are sort of the central app in a company. They connect all the people to each other and also all the other tools that a company might have, they kind of plug into them and they work as a sort of hub. And Salesforce apparently wants in on the action and is apparently willing to pay somewhere around $20 billion for it. Salesforce is arguably Microsoft's biggest rival when it comes to enterprise software and services, and I'm guessing that they're trying to build Slack into their own sort of super bundle like Microsoft has done with Office, which could give Slack a chance to compete on a more level playing field again. Alright, and my fill of the week is that China's push to build out its own chip industry in the wake of all the US trade sanctions and bans and everything appears to be going rather poorly, with a series of major failures. 
This week, HSMC, one of China's most promising chip manufacturers, which was supposedly building out a $20 billion manufacturing plant, basically went bankrupt. EE Times reports that its investors ran out of cash and that the management team was basically dissolved, while South China Morning Post reports that the company was basically taken over by the local government after suffering many delays and lots of debt issues and little progress. Even their website seems to be decidedly broken. This is happening not long after Global Foundries announced that they would shut their own miracle chip plant in China after citing years of poor and rushed planning from the local government, and after Nanjing-based Tacoma failed to launch their multi-billion dollar memory factory. And worse, even if they had succeeded, the best that these domestic chipmakers were hoping to build a year or two later down the line was 14 or maybe 7 nanometer chips, while TSMC and Samsung are already looking into transitioning to 3 nanometers. So the gap is so big it's unclear how they could catch up anytime soon. Add to that that Huawei was recently barred from using Snapdragon flagship chips in their upcoming phones, instead having to rely on Kirin 9000 chips that they already have have small quantities of, and things are starting to look really dire. Given that the technological challenges just seem insurmountable on the short term, I expect a couple of tough years ahead. I think the only possible solution for the situation right now would be a political one. All right, and now onto the phone and Crowd, my gadget review app. To celebrate that our weekly tech knowledge quizzes can now be taken inside the Crowd app, we wanted to do something special, and Nokia was kind enough to send us a second Nokia 8.3 to give away. They said they really liked the last Nokia quiz that we did with them, and we got a second phone, with a special James Bond themed box, a pair of earbuds, and a few other goodies. This is not sponsored by Nokia, beside the phone that they gave to us, but thank you Nokia regardless. As it is a new launch, we really wanted to get people to try taking the quiz inside the app so we can get as much feedback about it as possible. So this week, the quiz is exclusive to the Android app. To take the quiz, you gotta get the app, then open the hamburger menu, and there you have the Crowd Tech Knowledge Quiz. It's 20 really fun questions with a whole new system this week. You gotta get 15 of them right in five minutes, and then at the end, you can choose A, if you want an invitation code to make a Crowd account and start reviewing the gadgets that you have inside the app, and B, if you want to take part in the giveaway. Both are optional, terms and conditions, and the download link for Crowd are in the description, and I hope you try it out, give us some feedback on the quiz, and leave a few reviews of your favorite gadgets while you edit. Alright, that's it for this week. I'll see you next Friday.